Hello everybody, TGIF, first Friday of 2023, and I hope that you're going to have a great weekend coming up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. I do a lot of things on here, and lately I've had uh, just a ton of requests to do uh, some more videos about this subject of transgender, transgender in 2023. Some of the issues uh, surrounding some of the challenges and there'll be some videos about some of the good things to being yourself and finding yourself as a transgender. So it's not all bad by any means at all. And today may be one of those topics that, well, depending on your mileage may vary depending on your experience, but today I'm going to talk about uh, love, romance, and being transgender. And truth be told, in so many ways, romance, love is intimately tied to intimacy and being close to somebody physically and mentally. We invest a lot in relationships. We vest a lot of faith that this person that we're uh, embarking on a romance or a relationship with is going to have our back and uh, especially in 2023 in the era of social media and things, we, we, we vest a lot of faith. We put a lot into these relationships and of course like any relationship since the beginning of the time, we hope for the best when we go into the relationship. When it comes to being transgendered and being in a love relationship, obviously the mountain to climb is much higher if you're a typical male to female. And this is mainly addressed to that audience because it's really all I know in terms of the, uh, I don't know the the other, uh, the other route from uh, female to male, but I can speak on having had many relationships over the years. I can speak on the male to female aspects of it. And I can tell you one thing, and one thing is certain, and maybe you'll understand why I say the risk is a little less these days, but it certainly puts you in the zone of potential problems as a transgender because your expectations can be up here and yet the reality and thinking of your partner can be or prospective partner can be in a whole different plane than where you are so what do i mean by this i simply mean when you're transgender there's certain things that you have to do and decide in your mind one of the biggest ones that uh, typically has gotten some people into trouble is the, is the aspect of, do I tell somebody that I am transgender, male to female? And let's, let's be real. I have seen close up the work, the uh, fine craftsmanship, is, as, um, if you'll allow me, of the gender confirming surgeries from male to female and it can be astoundingly well it's, it's amazing what can be done these days in terms of visual appearance of being a genetic uh, female and that's of course what uh, many trans go for most trans go for is to be as close to that model as possible oh good but the problem comes is you have some that revel in the glory of um, do I tell somebody I'm transgendered or do I not? Should I tell my prospective fiance that I'm transgendered or not? Well, in my mind, I think it's a very important thing early on to be very upfront about who and what you are. Okay, the worst thing that happens is the trans woman is a surprise, catches a potential partner off guard, and they just go ballistic, perhaps go violent, and perhaps worse. Terrible situation, case after case after case after case, especially when liquor sometimes involved in the club scene. It's like, oh, you know, I wanted, to, it was so cool, you know, he thought I was all... Uh, all uh, woman, and then all of a sudden stuff got a little out of hand, and I'm there with his friends, and all of a sudden he uh, kisses me, and uh, 
you know, gets a little heavier outside. And the next thing I know, he discovers physically that I am not, you know, this is particularly pre-op. And you can have a huge problem with potential violence. It's happened a lot because this person is now risking face, right? Their whole, their whole gender proclivity, their whole, um, their whole preference on who they want to be with is now going to be called into question. Especially for some men, this can be a very defining moment of uh, horror for them. Sometimes they go to extraordinarily terrible lengths to claw back. That, well, this is the way I handled that situation. Maybe beat the hell out of the trans gal or worse. But let's take it another step further beyond that is the relationship where you've had all the sur gender confirming surgeries. You're happy with where you are on the spectrum of your transition and you come into a serious romantic situation. Right? Then the big issue becomes what do I owe my prospective partner? Well, I think this is where a little bit of the, in my mind, and this is my opinion, this is a little bit where the morality of the situation comes in. Number one, for me, I wouldn't even be that, that I wouldn't even be that far down, bro, okay? All right. And I'm going to just sidetrack here and tell you, social media has really been a blessing. It's not a blessing in many ways. It's a horror show of truth be told, but in the aspect of a potential partner knowing what or who you are, right? Finding somebody on social media as a trans can obviate and, and shortcut a lot of potential problems down the road. So I'm a, I'm a big advocate about full disclosure and meeting people where they expect, where they know what they're going to uh, get, so to speak, when they meet you. It's those situations where absent social media meeting and things, things snowball along. And then it comes to the point where you think of a long-term relationship, then your partner's going to have some expectations maybe for you about uh, having children and things in the future. Okay, and is it is it going to be, you know, nothing ever concealed in the dark is going to be good and will come to light eventually. And again, since I'm a firm believer that trans women, trans woman is a great thing to be, I never identify or try to as a fully female woman. And if your partner had the expectation and you're all, you're really happy about your transition and you're so passable with no issues at all, you're depriving your partner of the ability to say, no, this is not for me. Because their expectations in the future right, may not be what you think that they'll be. Or you may think to yourself, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes. And so, in other words, I think full disclosure is a very important thing. And this is why I like sites that people can meet because you can be yourself on that site. If you choose to declare it, it's a very important thing because romance is difficult enough anyway. And let's face it, there's a lot of guys out there that enjoy trans gals, and I have hundreds and probably thousands that I'm blessed to have on my channel. They're not looking for a relationship, but they enjoy some, some tiny measure of curious, some even tiny measure of them uh, reach out to me to have relationships and uh, things like that. I mean, it happens that um, there are men that are quite interested in, into transgender women. And that is all well and good. And I'm very happy for that aspect of things. But realize, and this is where real disappointment comes in. There's a difference between being an admirer, being a curiosity seeker, somebody, an experimenter, somebody wants to be with you because they want to, they want to know what it's like, especially if you're a pre-op 
a trans woman or a non-op trans woman, they're curious what the experience is. They're curious about the physicality. They're curious about what the relationship might be. And in those particular cases, it's very easy as a trans woman to potentially delude yourself that this is going to be uh, smooth sailing ahead. Because I'm going to be honest with you, very few of these relationships ever work out. Because I hate to tell you and lay it on you, but in many men's minds, and the ones that are happy about you being a trans is excellent and no but there's other ones that have a thinking about the future that's not going to include you because you're not a genetic woman. You're not able to be and produce what a genetic woman is able to produce. And it's the downfall of many relationships. Hey, this was cool, but I'm looking for a real, you know, I'm looking for a real woman to settle down with. I love you. You know, you're cool. You're sexy, you're beautiful, but you know, I need more in life. This happens a lot. Somebody said, why do so many trans women end up with other trans women? Well, number one, we perfectly understand each other. Okay, we know the journey. We have a commonality of ground that few other people have. And most of us have come to the realization that having a long-term relationship with a, with a man is a very difficult and chancy and low probability aspect of our lives. So this is why so many times that we find our best relationships, as I did, you know, five years with Missy, uh, with Missy Jen here and uh, perfectly relating to each other, still perfectly relating to each other on a daily basis today. But the, but the point is the expectations once we transition can really get us into trouble when we expect that we're going to find a guy that's immediately going to take to us. And we see it across social media on other YouTube platforms. Most of the time, trans women are with other people women okay or maybe genetic uh, women something like that because they have a little broader zone a lot broader zone of acceptance but you need to be careful this way of this this route that's so oh, my transition so wonderful so I'm just gonna I'm gonna fake it till I make it in life and then you're gonna find out you know if you ever need medical interventions and things that oh, this is an unusual case and you know, perhaps you want to come clean about this now. I mean, you know, you don't even want to go down that road in my mind because you're setting yourself up for potential problems. Now, Rosie, what about you? Well, that's the subject of another video coming up in our series. Hey, once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications and be a part of one of the most, I think one of the most interesting and diversified and very variety channels on YouTube from making Korean shake chicken in a bag to restoration of vintage audio metal detector and metal detecting and travel, a lot of fun. My bottom line today is though, keep your expectations realistic and honesty will be a good thing for you as you seek out a relationship. Because if you really love somebody, if you really love somebody, honesty has to be the bedrock foundation of that relationship. And a relationship that starts off with a dark secret is a relationship that is doomed thereby leveraging and multiplying dramatically the potential for failure, especially when compared against typical male-female relationships, marriage, etc. Okay, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Watch again, thumbs up, or appreciate it.